Good evening, Dr. Phil here. Today we'll be discussing on normal excitation contraction coupling. During normal excitation contraction coupling, electrical energy is transduced into the mechanical work of muscle contraction. The neuromuscular junction is a chemical synapse between a motor neuron and its muscle fiber. An action potential arrives at the presynaptic terminal, causing voltage-gated calcium channels in the presynaptic membrane to open. Calcium influx into the presynaptic terminal occurs via the voltage-gated calcium channels, and this stimulates the release of acetylcholine from the synaptic vesicles into the synaptic cleft. This process involves the activation of many proteins, such as synaptotechmin, syntaxins, synaptophysin, and synaptobrevin. Synaptobrevin is inhibited by botulinum toxin, which prevents ACH release and muscle contraction. Prejunctional nicotinic cholinergic receptors modulate ACH mobilization and release via a positive feedback mechanism. ACH is released into the synaptic cleft via exocytosis. Acetylcholine diffuses across the synaptic cleft and binds to postjunctional nicotinic receptors on the postsynaptic membrane, which is a ligand gated sodium channel. ACHR consists of five glycoprotein subunits characterized as alpha, alpha, beta, delta, and epsilon, which forms a central ionopore. One molecule of ACH binds to one of the two alpha units, and this facilitates the binding of a second, during which the receptor undergoes a conformational change and the ionopore opens. Each acetylcholine only interacts with an alpha unit only once before being broken down. Ligand-gated sodium channels open, and sodium influx occurs in the postsynaptic cell, causing depolarization of the cell membrane. An action potential is generated along the postsynaptic membrane if depolarization exceeds a threshold. Acetylcholine unbinds from the ligand-gated sodium channel, which then closes. Acetylcholine esterase attached to the postsynaptic membrane breaks down acetylcholine into acetic acid and choline. Acetylcholine in the cleft is broken down by acetylcholine esterase at the cleft within 100 microseconds after acetylcholine interaction with an alpha unit. Choline is simported with sodium into the presynaptic terminal. Acetic acid diffuses away from the synaptic cleft. Choline is recycled to make new acetylcholine. The synthesis of acetylcholine in the motor nerve terminal is catalyzed by choline O acetyltransferase. ACH is formed from the acetylation of choline. ACH is stored in vesicles, which lie just within the axonal prejunctional membrane. Acetic acid from metabolism and recycled choline constitutes new acetylcholine molecules in the presynaptic terminal. ACH is then taken up by synaptic vesicles. Summary of processes leading to muscle contraction. An action potential arrives at the presynaptic terminal Calcium channels open and calcium enters the presynaptic terminal and acetylcholine are released from the presynaptic vesicles to the synaptic cleft. ACH stimulates sodium channels on the postsynaptic membrane, which then open. Sodium diffuses into the muscle fibers and the action potential initiated travels along the sarcolemma and T-tubule membranes. Action potential in the T-tubule causes the sarcoplasmic reticulum to release calcium. Dihydropyridine receptors, DHPR, within the T-tubules act as voltage sensors and undergoes a conformational change in response to the arrival of the action potential. DHPR plus an intracytoplasmic loop of protein interacts with the rhionodine receptor, RYR, which is the calcium release channel of the sarcoplasmic reticulum. The calcium ion conducting pore of RYR opens briefly and calcium is released into the cytosol. Calcium binds to troponin on actin, which moves tropomyosin and exposes the myosin head attachment sites. Myosin heads bind to the exposed active sites on the actin myofilaments to form cross bridges, and phosphates are released from the myosin heads. ATP on myosin heads are broken down to ADP and phosphate, which releases energy for movement of the myosin heads. Actin-myosin cross-bridging converts about 40% of energy used into work, while the rest is used to generate heat. 
oxygen and energy substrates are consumed and carbon dioxide is released when ATP is generated by mitochondria for muscle contraction. The heads of myosin myofilaments bend towards the M line, causing actin to slide past myosin. The cycle repeats as long as calcium is present. Normally, calcium is actively sequestered out of the cytosol, for example, by circa, which uses ATP for calcium reuptake back into the sarcoplasmic reticulum. This reduces cytosolic calcium and enables muscles to relax. Breakdown of ATP and cross bridge movement during muscle contraction. Exposure of active sites. Active sites on actin myofilaments are exposed when calcium binds to the troponins and tropomyosins move. Cross bridge formation. Cross bridges are formed when myosin heads binds to the exposed active sites on the actin myofilaments. Power stroke. Phosphates are released from the myosin heads. Energy stored in the myosin heads is used to move the myosin heads towards the M line. Actin myofilaments slide past the myosin myofilaments. ADP molecules are released from the myosin heads. Cross bridge release. An ATP molecule then binds to the myosin heads, causing them to detach from the actin myofilament. ATP hydrolysis and recovery stroke. Myosin ATPase portion of the myosin head breaks down ATP to ADP and phosphate, which remain attached to the myosin heads. Myosin heads return to a resting position, and energy is stored in the myosin heads. If calcium is still attached to troponin, cross bridge formation and movement are repeated again. For discussions on myasthenia gravis, Lambert Eaton myasthenic syndrome, neuromuscular blockers, and malignant hyperthermia, kindly refer to the respective video link provided in the video description. These are my references. Thank you.